<laughs> We're going to start in a couple of minutes, everybody. We're just going to give people a chance to arrive. Um, welcome. This is the Redcliffe Way Design Competition Information Webinar. So hopefully you're here for that. And just to let you know that we are going to be recording the session. So um, if you would prefer not to have your face recorded, please do turn off your camera. Um, we just want to make sure that anyone who can't be at the session live can, can watch it on YouTube as well. So welcome. And we look forward to giving you a little bit more information. If you would like to change your name to include your organization as well, that's um, obviously not required, but it is helpful for us to know who we're talking to. And I might just start with some intros while we while we just giving people a couple of more minutes to come in. Um, we have Gorham Holmes here. We have Christiana Macri, who is the development manager for Gorham. Christiana, maybe you can give a little wave. And also Jeff Fox, who is the partnership director at Gorham Homes. Jeff can give a wave. And then Jez Sweetland, who is the project director for the Bristol Housing Festival. And I should probably introduce myself. I'm also from the Bristol Housing Festival. I am um, the projects and policy lead. And then we are delighted to have us with us as well, the Redcliffe Neighborhood Forum, or some of them. We have Richard Silverman. Richard, could you give a wave? Melissa Mean, and also Dan Tyndall, who is also the vicar of St. Mary Redcliffe's Church. So we have a great panel who are going to just give you a little bit more information about the competition, a little bit more information about the site and the process. And then most importantly today, we really want to make sure that you have the chance to ask all of your questions. So we're going to start with a short presentation from the panel. Um, Gorham Holmes is going to tell us a little bit more about who they are and why they're hosting this design competition. Um, and then Jez will give us the perspective from the Bristol Housing Festival, why we're involved and what we're excited about. And then finally, the Redcliffe Neighborhood Forum are going to um, tell us a bit about their plans for the regeneration of the area, their hopes for competition, um, and then we'll move into some Q&A. So I'm going to hand over to Jeff first. Thanks, Jesse. So welcome, everybody. Um, this obviously is an exciting project, an exciting time. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more just about Gorham Homes in general and then hand over to Christiana, who will tell you more about this particular opportunity and what it means for us. Um, so Gorham, we're a subsidiary of the council. Um, we were set up officially in 2018, but have really been trading since 2020. And we're at the end of the day, a delivery vehicle for the council. Um, so we you know, are very much in business to deliver more homes in response to the housing crisis. Um, we, our model is based on a mixture of market sale and affordable housing. I think it's fair to say that we will never do a scheme in Gorham that doesn't deliver at least policy compliant affordable housing. So that's clearly very important. Where possible, we try to do additional affordable housing. It's not always achievable, but you know that is a major objective for us. But the quality of what we do, as well as numbers, is very, very important. So um, we, we are here to create sustainable homes and sustainable communities. So uh, you know, I think achieving carbon zero, at least in terms of energy usage, is a minimum requirement for any Gorham scheme going forward. Um, and biodiversity net gain is a, another issue that's very, very big on our agenda. I would urge you all to look at our website um, and our business plan within that website sets out in a lot more detail about what we're about because we're in essence a value-driven organization. So our values are important to us and we want to work with people who share those values. It's not just about buildings, it's about how, how we work and how we behave. Um, I think it's also, though, is just worth noting, just, just as a, a word of caution, that we are established as Gorham to provide a commercial return to our shareholder, and our shareholder is Bristol City Council. So we do um, want to raise the bar on the standards on all sorts of fronts in terms of the quality of what we do, but we also do want to generate a land value and a profit. We are not here to make a loss, for sure, and we you know, so... Um, schemes have to be deliverable and viable. There'll be no point in um, 
delivering a, a, a design competition that generates the most wonderful design that can never ever be built. So I want the, you know, for me, any design competition has to also be, you know, grounded in a combination of blue sky thinking and reality. Um, overall, Gorham has a programme of nearly 3,000 homes with a variety of projects from prime city centre sites out into the suburbs of Bristol. And this is one of the most prominent of our city centre sites. And that's why we're delighted to we bring this forward via a design competition and so with that I think I will simply hand over to Christiana. Thank you Jeff. Um, I think it's important to say I'm, I'm sure a, a, a lot of you would know that we have just closed and finalized our Castle Park design competition um, for which we had Bristol Housing Festival with us on as well. Um, so we felt that was a very successful um, undertaking and we're very happy with the results and we're about to appoint a group work and McGregor Coxall who are, were the winners for the Castle Park design competition um, to start taking uh, the scheme um, to Reba stage two. Uh, so that gives a bit of background as to why we felt um, a design competition for um, our Portwell Lane car park site would also be fitting. Um, what we do with each of our sites changes depending on the side and depending on whether, for example, the, the council's housing delivery team has been involved um, in de-risking the site or not. So, you know, sometimes we open a tender for architects and, and choose within um, a shorter number of those. And sometimes we select um, firms we work with uh, together with our joint venture partner. Uh, but in the case of this site specifically, we felt that it is too important for us to just, you know, go to, to architects that we're familiar with or um, just pick out from a list, really. Um, we see it as really important, mainly because of its location and significance to, to Bristol as a city. So it is very well connected. Uh, it's a very central site. Um, not only you can, you know, catch a metro bus there or walk there from anywhere in the town center. It's very near the Temple Mead station. People would see it as sort of a gateway um, into the center of Bristol as well as you would you know, walk through there to get to Queen Square or the Harbour side um, area. So for us, it feels like one of the most significant sites on our pipeline. And that's why we felt by uh, hosting a design competition, we would be able to get the best ideas out there. And following from what Jeff was saying, um, in terms of the quality we want to be delivering here, um, I mean, both in terms of aesthetic and design quality, sustainable communities delivering net carbon zero and the biodiversity net gain, we feel like there are ideas out there um, from all over the country um, that could come in and, and sort of inspire us in that sense. Um, and that's why we're hosting a design competition to try and get the best team possible to work with us on this. Um, I feel like I could share um, just a visual of the site, um, just to, I don't know if you can see that actually. Um, I, can you see that, Jesse? Yes, thumbs up. Okay, good. Um, so this is what I was saying, really. You can see the railway station here, Queen Square, the floating harbour over here, and you can see how central to Bristol this site is. Um, not forgetting, of course, um, that it sits um, north of the St. Mary Redcliffe Church, which I'm sure Dan is going to talk about um, in a little bit more detail, but it is a great one listed building. So it's not every day you get to deliver a scheme um, that's across from something so historic and important um, in a town center. So um, we are looking for the best possible ideas um, that would create an exemplar scheme that would showcase um, urban living, um, but at the same time, just be the first piece of the puzzle, as we said um, as well, uh, when it comes to, to delivery. I'll leave it at that because I could talk forever, I feel.
Great. Thank you, Christiana. And uh, I'll follow you. So I don't know, Christiana, whether you want to, uh, if you finish, like carry on just, yeah. And if you want to stop. Yeah, go on. Me. Sorry. I just don't know how to answer. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Out. Go on. Don't worry. Don't worry. We've got nice pictures to look at. Oh, they've got, I was going to say, it's probably better looking at my face anyway, so that's fine. But um, it, it's great to be here today. And, and uh, uh, as a representative of, of the Bristol Housing Festival, we're really privileged to be working uh, with a team to put on this competition as uh, as um, Christiana mentioned, we've just been working with Gorham previously, and we're, we're, we're really thrilled with the outcome of that design competition. Um, and the reason we are so committed to this site and, and this group is, is there's a sense here, and I think if you've seen the little intro video that was recorded, I think Dan Tyndall captured it really, really critically. This is such a key site for Bristol, um, not just in terms of the heritage of where it sits, but also it is a gateway and part of that broader regeneration. So the aspiration for us as the housing festival is that this needs to be a statement of intent as well. It needs to be really looking at how we um, are going to, uh, you know, do that first step of that wider regeneration. And for the for us as the festival, one of the things we're really committed to, and this is why, what a privilege to work with Gorham Homes on this, and then to work with the wider community um, as that 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 community group is how do we really understand how to deliver housing that is, as Jeff referred to, is going to really deliver both affordable housing, but this is a mixed use development. So this opportunity of creating a place a place that fosters community, a place that is imbued, as it were, with the wisdom and the knowledge and the commitment and understanding of a local community so that the win is that those people that live there feel this is, you know, really contributing to their needs uh, and, and creating that place, but also as a win for the wider city in terms of a contribution to the housing need that we have across the city. And we know how difficult this is because, of course, as, as Jeff has alluded, we can't just tick the housing box numbers. We have to work so critically to ensure that we're tackling our carbon agenda and that biodiversity gain. This has to be a place of quality. And yes, it has to economically stack up. But that's where this site in its location with the opportunity of, of looking at how we sort of get the viability to work on such a city lo location is so exciting for us. And I think the final thing I want to say really is the Bristol Housing Fest is that we, we kind of want to unleash that creativity because one of the things that we're so committed to working in partnership is creating shared vision. Uh, I'm, I'm working with this group, working through this competition, there is such an opportunity of really defining that shared sense of purpose and vision for this site. And as we do that, it's also about changing that narrative on housing for us as a city. One of the things that we find particularly difficult is that too often we see in the in the press really that there's just a critique of, of housing delivery. There's a there's an incompetent local authority or there's a, a terrible sort of planning decision. And on this site, we have a chance of really coming together to change that narrative, to talk about when it's done well, when it's done in collaboration, when it's done with real wisdom at the heart of it, understanding the community, but really driving the housing needs of the city, we can demonstrate what it looks like to have a successful scheme where everybody feels heard and understood. And yes, it will mean compromise. I think we, you know, we, we realize that you can't get everything that you always want, but if that compromise is worked through in partnership, we've certainly got a real opportunity of doing something that makes every stakeholder feel that this is a really great result for the city. So for us as the Housing Fest, we're really privileged to be part of this. We, we see our role as to be an enabler and a facilitator and sort of standing behind those, those stakeholders uh, who will be the, the judging panel ensuring that we get the right partners to move forward for this critical site for Bristol. And in terms of those critical stakeholders, I can't think of uh, you know, a, a more critical partner really. So I'm delighted now to hand on to, uh, to Melissa. Melissa. Thank you. And thank you, Jess. And yes, delighted to be here. So I'm Melissa Mean from the Redcliffe Neighbourhood Forum. Um, and I think it's kind of people have touched on previously, one of the kind of special things about this competition and this project is it is genuinely a developer, a council and a community working collaboratively together. That is like kind of pretty rare stakes in, in the kind of development game. So um, that is something to be kind of um, held and cherished, really. Um, and Redcliffe is, you know, we've been working on this for 10 years plus. Um, we've been holding this space and holding hope for this space. Um, and this is a community that wants to say yes to development, but the right kind of development. So some, a few tips and tricks of kind of like as you're developing your ideas about what the right kind of development might look like. So please don't look at this site in isolation. There's a red line and there's a yellow line. Look at that yellow line and beyond. It's about showing how this smaller site can unlock the whole of Redcliffe Way. And um, we've done some of the hard work for you. We've got a draft neighbourhood plan. If you go to redcliffeforum.org, lots of good material in there to, for you to look at. I was thinking, it's really thinking about 
how do we stitch North and South Redcliffe back together using this site and the surrounds? At the moment, we're kind of crushed and kind of hung, drawn and quartered by cars and tarmac. So how can we change that? We've got a more prosperous South, a very high disadvantaged South. You know, child poverty rates are in the top 1% in the South Redcliffe. What does your proposal do for this community? Um, third, we're not actually looking for a building. I know this is an architectural competition, but we're not looking for a new building. We're looking for a new heart for our neighbourhood. It's about being humane, mid-rise, mixed use, zero carbon, with really strong community and green infrastructure. What's really going on at ground level? What's happening? And then kind of finally, anything that gets built here needs a huge amount of Im imagination. You know, what can sit beautifully and respond to a 600-year-old Gothic masterpiece and at the same time anticipate and give us what we need to live for now and the future? So in anything that kind of people put forward, we really want you to think about and show how real people and diverse people will live well here, both inside the building and outside as well. And over to you, Dan. The 600 year old Gothic masterpiece, I'm sure is what you're referring to when you said over to you, Dan. Um, thank you, Melissa. So I'm Dan Tindall. I am the Vicar of Mary Cliff, and I am also on the Neighbourhood Forum. I sit on the uh, on the board looking at this with our partners uh, in with both those hats on. So as a Church of England minister, I can't not take the opportunity just to talk for a moment about the Archbishop of Canterbury's Housing Commission and uh, the, the essence of housing that is really important to the church. And there are five S's that come out with that, which are, you know, that these, these houses need to be sustainable, safe, stable, social and satisfying. That's what we're, as a church, that's where we are planting our flag for housing for the future, which is something more than being uh, affordable. It's about actually creating a place, creating a community, uh, creating that sense of, of safety and sociability where people can thrive from, from cradle to grave. But coming back to St Mary Redcliffe, uh, if you were, if you know this place, little picture right behind me, uh, 350 years on the south side, virtually nothing has changed at all. On the north side, every 70 years, Redcliffe changes, uh, and on the west side as well. But we're looking particularly at the north side. We have uh, maps going back to the 18th century, which show us how the development line has shifted considerably over those years. So we're not looking at doing anything new here. I mean, that's one of the things that we need to get away from, that this somehow developing on the side of Redcliffe is, is somehow you know, outrageously new. This is just part and parcel of, of what has happened time after time after time. The last time was post-war, uh, 70 years on. So this is bang on the money. We're absolutely at the right time in the right place for this development to, to come to fruition. Alongside the, uh, the, the Redcliffe Way development, we have our own development plans, which are ambitious. Uh, we have uh, a need to increase our space for our Sunday school. We have a need to increase our education offer, both to the local community as well as to our congregation. Uh, we have an ambition to provide uh, an event space, which will help change our sustainability, our financial sustainability model. Uh, we have a desire to serve that community. Uh, we are already serving that community that Melissa spoke about earlier on, uh, but we have a desire to change our funding model. And our plan there is to uh, is, is held by the strap line uh, to serve our parish better. We need to serve our visitors better. So over the next few years, you're going to see a huge amount of change on the north side. And what you're going to propose in your competition entries need to sit alongside both this Gothic masterpiece and the developing ideas for what we call Project 450. Uh, all the information for Project 450 is on our website. All the documentation that we have gathered over the last term, 15, 20 years, is all there and you can read it all to your heart's content because what we really want is a development here that will uh, spring into life opposite St Mary Redcliffe and that will link Temple Meads uh, through St Mary Redcliffe, through the new heart of, of Redcliffe, uh, to Redcliffe Wharf and then on to Bristol South Bank, uh, the SS Great Britain. So we can do that first and last mile journey uh, and, and create a neighbourhood that is a, is, is a really fitting place for the city as well as for this new neighbourhood. Uh, so back to Jess. Thank you so much, everybody. 
So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview of the competition and um, and a bit of a sense of how excited we all are um, for, for what this can be. And so most of you should have seen our info pack. If you haven't seen it, it's on the Bristol Housing Festival website. There's a folder that you'll have access to. And in that folder is a full competition brief, as well as all of the background information, the drawings, um, aerial views of the site, the red and yellow lines. So all of that should be easy to find. We also have an FAQs document in there, which we're updating all the time. So if you do have a question, that comes up that you haven't, um, that, that you've checked before and it wasn't in the FAQs, uh, do you note that we are keeping that updated. So in a couple of minutes, we're going to go into a time of um, Q&A. So if you have a question, please feel free to put it in the chat now, or you can raise your virtual hand. It's easier if you raise your virtual hand than your actual hand, because that brings you to the front of my screen. So it helps me to see whose hands are raised, but feel free to put something in the chat as well. Um, and just to say that at the moment, we're in the first stage of the competition. So what we're looking for are big ideas. We're looking for inspiring, inclusive ideas for the site. And we're not looking for you to put huge amounts of work in at this stage. So. Um, the, the requirement is two to three images of, your, of what you plan for the site, maybe two images of what you're thinking for the surrounding area. As you've heard, it's very important that you consider the surrounding area in your designs. And then 500 words explaining your um, proposed designs and then 500 words on who you are. And what will happen next is those will get sent through to the Bristol Housing Festival. We will anonymize them and we will give those to the judging panel. In stage two, we're gonna choose up to five shortlisted firms to go forward. Um, all of them will be given an amount to develop their ideas further. And then we will choose a final winner later in the summer this year. So we're very excited for this competition. We're looking forward to all the ideas that are coming forward. We're hugely encouraged to have so many of you on this call today, and we would love to answer your questions. So if you have a question, please do raise your hand and um, we'd love to answer those for you. Just to say as well, we have added a few more documents to the background information. I know many of you were looking for um, the updated files from the City Council. And so those are all in the folder. And the Project 450 link as well is also in the background information. So if you want to find out more about that. Uh, we can say we will be also updating the uh, frequently asked questions um, form live uh, when we confirm the stage one judging panel as well. So what we can say now is that it, it is uh, a mixture of uh, Gorham Homes, uh, the council and uh, the neighborhood forum. So um, we will be confirming the exact judging panelists uh, within that FAQ document as well for whoever wants to, to know. So we've had um, one question come through. Do you have any sort of restrictions or guidance in terms of building density and maximum height? So I'll, I'll respond first of all, Jesse, as always there might be more than one answer on this, even from the panel, but um, the reality is obviously planning policy will, will, will be a, a factor. Clearly, um, I, I think it's fair to say that we see that, that any development here being in medium rise rather than high rise. Um, but that being said, what does even medium rise mean in, in a city centre location? Um, you know, I see that as four to eight storeys um, is, is possible. But, you know, whether eight storeys is truly uh, achievable is, 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 is a debate. Um, and it still does also come back to viability. I know I'm going to be the voice of doom and gloom in the corner, but um, it, something has to be viable here. So if we go too low, it's, also, it's a wasted opportunity and um, not enough new housing on, on a brownfield site. So, so there's a balance to be had, isn't there? But um, I, you know, we clearly do not see this high rise. I think it's fair to say, I don't know, Christiana, if you've got anything to add. Agreed with you, Jeff. 
covered. And but basically, the, the short answer is no, we haven't put a specific height or story cap, but obviously, all the other things that we've said in terms of considering the surrounding area uh, and the buildings um, on all sides of the site will have to be considered. So, you know, we're not giving a specific cap, but obviously, uh, sometimes the, there is a natural cap on things that architects would know um, to recognize. Great, thank you both. If you do have a question, feel free to raise your hand or just pop them in the chat. Um, another thing to mention is that part of stage two is um, stakeholder of, of a light stakeholder engagement, um, where we ask people in the community to, to give some reflections on the presentations. And this is just to, to give some ideas um, for what are important to the, the city stakeholders when they're looking at your designs. Um, and we, we had a session for the Castle Park Design Competition and all of the firms just said how, um, how helpful it was to be able to have that time to really engage with some of the stakeholders in the city and to find out what's important to them and how they could incorporate those ideas as they develop their designs further. So I've just seen there's um, another couple of questions that have come through. Peter Morgan has asked, are Gorham looking for 160 dwellings? Christiane or Jeff? So the number that we've allocated in our 2022 business plan that Jeff mentioned earlier is 110. But again, uh, that doesn't really mean that that's the number that has to be hit or capped at. Um, basically, as Jeff keeps saying, it has to be viable. And obviously, our main reason of being as Gorham Homes is to um, help tackle the housing crisis and deliver much needed homes. Um, so. Great, thank you. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next question then. Jeff, if you're happy with that answer. Given you are partly picking an approach and partly picking a team, can you please explain how the anonymizing of entries sits with the 500 words on the team? Is there a marking percentage for each? Um, I think I can give the beginning of an answer for that. So the, there's 500, there are two separate 500 words written in parts of the entry. So the first 500 words is just about your ideas. Um, and then the second 500 words is about the company, but that's, that's the part that will be anonymized for Gorham Homes. So if you could not put your logo on images, that helps us to anonymize that easily. So it's not so much about a percentage you're awaiting, and especially in stage one, it is completely anonymous. Christiana, did you want to add anything? Uh, we've had the example of doing it at, uh, for Castle Park as well. Obviously, when people talk about their their firms or teams experience and, you know, that does come through. You don't need to know exactly um, who the people are or who the firm is to, to take their experience or passion or the way they work into account that can come through from that text. Um, so that's what I would say in that case. Great, thank you. Um, okay, given your sustainability aspirations and the site's location, do you have an approach to reduce limited parking provision and has this been discussed with the council? Will they share your aspirations? Yeah, I, I, on, on this one, for sure, it's gonna be a reduced stroke limited parking, it may almost be zero parking here, you know, you're not going to get a more sustainable location um, in terms of the city centre. There would always be a limited amount of parking for um, wheelchair users and also need to be drop off points, won't there, for deliveries, that sort of thing is, is a part of modern, modern day society. Um, but, you know, we've had some very high level discussions but you know, more detailed discussions will be needed. But the, the, the clear emphasis, you know, highways generally will try and push us down towards a zero parking on this. It'll be somewhere between zero and uh, you know, 50% parking absolute tops. But I, I see it being closer to zero. Great, thank you, Jeff. 
um, and related, has the highway strategy been agreed for the site? For example, the Redcliffe neighborhood plans approach to removing roundabout altering road routes. Is there a minimum carriageway width for Redcliffe Way? Would you like to speak into that as well, Jeff? Yeah, I'll give it my best shot. I mean, feel free, anyone else on the panel to join in. But um, again, there have been discussions around this and there is actual funding to consider improvements to Redcliffe Way and the roundabout. So there is a there's WECA funding that's available. And, um, you know, so, so, you know, it's the art of what's possible. I think it's fair to say from all the conversations we've had, Redcliffe Way in some form will stay open. It, it is a vital link. It, the, the idea that it could almost be closed completely, given recent other changes across the city, is, is probably deemed a step too far. But does it mean there are changes that are possible to the carriageway? Could the width change possibly? But the, there is a bus lane there to consider. So, so I think, again, it, it's the art of what's possible. We can't <coughs> say for sure there is a minimum requirement here um, or a maximum. But, um, you know, clearly we recognize that at the moment, Redcliffe Way is a major divider of the local community. And so we, we want to try and find ways to make it more accessible and encouraging for people to cross that road. Thank yeah, you. and just add, adding to that, there's a general agreement that there's an excess of highway here at the moment. So this is the last remaining chunk of kind of dual carriageway. Um, the highway that cut across Queen Square has been taken out. Uh, the very exciting kind of uh, a raised highway has been taken out by um, Temple Mead. So this is the last kind of chunk of that 1960s engineering to be removed. And so, you know, part of this brief is about looking kind of creative options for that. It could be about shrinking the roundabout. It could be taking out one, two lanes, maybe more. Um, um, so that I think, you know, that's part of thinking about how, how the red lines kind of site and, and that wider yellow line site um, um, kind of interact. So we're definitely looking for ideas there. And just to sort of directly answer the question, um, then Jesse, no, there has not been a strategy agreed <laughs> um, that sort of defines what that is. Um, hence, we're asking for, for ideas within the yellow line, but obviously a strategy has not been agreed. Great, thank you. Um, and we've got a couple more questions sort of related to this, so any of the panelists feel free to jump in. Um, the Redcliffe plan contains reference to active ground floors for the site. Is this a prerequisite for the site? Um, and I'll just throw the other one out there as well. When selecting the team, do the red line ideas carry more weight than the yellow line ideas? So I'll start and maybe then pass on to, to Richard or, or Melissa. Um, yes, I would say the red line ideas carry more weight. That is the primary site. Obviously, what is proposed for the red line idea sh should obviously come from something and derive from a more extensive um, thought process that has considered the surroundings. So I see the two as quite linked. Um, you know, how are you proposing something meaningful within the red line that would be worthy of being shortlisted when there hasn't been enough um, sort of thought process around that yellow line? But the short answer is yes, because the red line is the actual site that is to be developed um, by Gorham Homes. Um, but take of that from what you want. Um, and in terms of the ground floors, um, I'll just answer as asked, but I'm sure the, the neighborhood forum would have a lot to say about this. But from our side, we see this as, you know, this is a, a very central and strategic site. It's not sort of tucked away somewhere. Um, the amount of people that pass through um, on the side of that car park site um, is massive throughout the day. Um, and yes, we are looking for it to be a usable space that people can use even if they don't live there. So definitely some sort of activated area. Don't want to it doesn't have to be ground floor as such, but obviously 
there have to be areas provided that activate the site itself and provide opportunities for people that don't actually live within the site. Um, so, you know, yes, is the short answer, but I'll pass on to the neighborhood forum. Can I just jump in on that as well and, and um, talk a bit about the aspirations that we have for the uh, Samaria Redcliffe House for the North Side development, which you know, if it was possible to imagine a way of the, the, the Port Wall Lane car park site bleeding into the, the church's own development site and vice versa, uh, as a church, we would have absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. And the conversations that we've had over the years with the City Council mean that there'd be no problem with that either, in, in principle at least. And um, I think there's a, there's a nice idea that somehow the demarcation of land ownership would be um, would be marked by kind of pennies in the in the concrete or or a line of something else that you know which would hardly be noticeable uh, to the naked eye. But um, the the complexities around the the traffic management, the complexities around the subsurface services, means that that kind of stuff would be um, would be a fantastic trick to pull off, but probably quite probably quite difficult. Can I be heard? I yeah, go ahead, Richard. I'll jump in. Yes, um, we two points we made about that. I think we understand the site is liable to flooding, so that will mean that there's no housing on the ground floor. I think the other is that if you take the location within the context of the other things in Bristol that people enjoy, and the the harbour is something that people, particularly during this during COVID, have gone down marching around there in their thousands then this is an opportunity to make this part of uh, Redcliffe a destination by having the sorts of uses on the ground floor that are not a small supermarket and not those, are not a, a sort of cost, cost of coffee. And there's a precedent in, precedent in Bristol where all the units have been taken by small organizations and it's a great success. So, this building is a destination, this building and its surroundings as a destination is in the forum's mind. And just to add to that, I think it's more than just an active ground floor. Think beyond the building, it's about the public realm and how it connects up the buildings around it and creates a kind of um, a journey through to, and connecting up other places as well. So it's, a, you know, it's an active kind of landscape, if you like, rather than just an active ground floor. Great, thank you. All right, does anyone else have any questions to ask the panel? This is a good sign. Our, our information must have been very clear. I think we missed one, um, Jesse, asking about the mixed use development being restricted to this red line that I'm just looking at in the chat now so oh, well in that, um, I think Alastair asked the question. So I read it out is the housing and mixed use development assumed to be restricted to the red line or can it expand into the wider surrounding area as neighborhood plan or are the ideas for the wider site assumed landscaping? So that's a no. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> ideas for the surrounding areas don't have to be just landscaping. Um, that's why we've sort of described it, and I'm going to be bored of myself saying that as the first piece of that puzzle. We don't know what the rest of the puzzle looks like. Um, we know this will be uh, a mixed-use residential-led scheme, um, but that leaves sort of possibilities open for the surrounding, and that's why we're we're asking that question, you know, maybe um, someone sees the surrounding as primarily landscape and sort of focuses all of the um, building activities on one side and others see it as, you know, possibly see it as a cluster of buildings that just have a relationship with each other or whatnot, you know, don't have the answer to this. Hence a competition, but you know what I mean? Great, thank you. Um, and we've just had a question about restating the dates and deadlines. So the, the deadline for stage one is the 13th of April at 5 p.m. And then the, the second stage will be about eight weeks after that. So we're expecting late summer, early autumn to, 
to to close up the the second stage and announce the winner. Okay, so I'm going to give about a minute to see if anybody else has a question. We did have a question come through on email um, that asked about if there was an indicative cost per meter squared for the build. Um, I don't know if somebody would like to answer that while we just wait and see if any other questions come through. And then I'm going to go back to the panel and just give everybody a chance to add any final thoughts or, or final things they'd like to say and make sure it gets said before we we close up. So I'll, I'll let the panel think about that while um, Christiana or Jeff answer the question about the cost. I mean, uh, just on cost, it's, it's fairly simple. Until we see the size and the complexity of the building, we won't know the cost. So we, we cannot say what a cost estimate overall is. And in terms of pound per square meter, well, again, it's just, we know this is going to be high quality. We know it will not, in a sense, be at the lower end of cost on a per square meter basis, but by the same token, it's ultimately got to be deliverable and viable. So um, there will be a balance to be had. But again, I, I couldn't tell you what that figure is right now. That's to be determined. Great. Thank you, Jeff. That's helpful. OK, so I think that looks like that's all the questions we have um, from everybody that came today. So I'm going to come back to We'll start maybe with Redcliffe Neighbourhood Forum, if we could go Melissa and then Dan and then Richard, if you have any, any final thoughts and then moving on to Jez and finishing off with Jeff and Christiana. Um, so please feel free to, to leave us with your, your parting words and advice. Uh, well, I think, you know, the, the ideas have been covered. I think we just, you know, this is the open invitation to kind of, this is a site that we've held close to our hearts for a long time. And so this is a chance to open it out and really bring in the kind of creativity from others. So really looking forward to seeing what people bring. Uh, I think for me, it's um, trying to divest yourselves of this idea that we're talking about a building. Uh, we're not talking about a building, we're talking about a, a place that's gonna be a fantastic place to live and work and visit. Uh, we're talking about architectural style that has the audacity to sit opposite St Mary Redcliffe Church. And we're talking about a, a destination that links Temple Mead Station on one side to the SS Great Britain on the other uh, via this new heart of Redcliffe, St Mary Redcliffe Church, Redcliffe Wharf and Bristol South Bank. Should be a doddle. Um, if I could just add to that, um, there will be a building. And I think that it would be a pity if the very necessary thinking in outline about what the context of the building is in all that Dan and Melissa have said, I think that's very important. But also this building next to St Mary Redcliffe has to be a piece of architecture in its own right. Great. Well, thank you for those. I think uh, sometimes I'm conscious when we're, when we're talking, I've just been listening, that it feels like we've come with a perhaps an impossible task. But actually, when you think about this site uh, and you think about, you know, the opportunity, it is absolutely right that there's a sense of stewardship over this site because it's, it's much more than the sum of its parts. And I think in that context, what I, what I, there's been quite a lot of discussion about, you know, the red line and the yellow lines. And I think what I would simply say for my mind is this, that um, the red line will obviously inform the future and the success of the yellow lines as well. And that as we de deliver this project, one of the things that's going to be so important is that the red line demonstrates that kind of commitment to quality for that community to buy into that planning process. You know, the, the, if we do the red line well, it will also unlock the opportunity of building that momentum and that trust as the rest of the regeneration takes place. So I think for, for, for me, that parting shot is that there's, a, there's obviously under Project 1000 and the, and the partnership of Gorham to really be a vehicle for the, for the council to partner with more housing. This is about pace of delivery, but it's also about creating that trust, uh, about building that community trust and that wider city trust. So there's, there's a real sense, and I think, you know, the word that Melissa uses spot on, this is about stewardship because we're going to unlock a, a really great potential through, through this site to do a lot more as well. So uh, we're, we're excited to see what your creative 
uh, juices get going and sort of creative solutions to really deliver a great project. I'll go next then and then hand over to Christiana to finish. Obviously, she wanted the big finale. Um, it, uh, the, I mean, for me, this is all about quality. And, you know, uh, Richard touched on it very much, quality of building. Yes, I get that there's, there's a bigger picture here, and clearly that's critical. But um, quality of building, um, and often, for me, simplicity and that quality of building is, is key. It's great quality materials, great quality details, great quality design. It's not necessarily the wizziest, um, most astounding design it might be. You know, as I say, I'm not, I'm not trying to say what things may or may not be, but quality has got to shine through whatever your design thinking here. Um, because that, it, you know, it, it, we would have failed if, if we don't achieve that. So, and it's quality of your team as well. I'd ask you to, you know, really think about that. That was a big factor in our Castle Park deliberations, quality of team. Who can we work with? Who share our values? Um, but, but you know, who, get, who gets this vision? And, and, you know, and also, yeah, also has the technical knowledge and ability to deliver in, in a demanding location. So that's not easy always, you know. So you need to be both. You need to have great vision. And you need to be technically very strong and design great buildings. So I want it all, I'm afraid, you know, so um, that we want quality throughout in everything you do. So with that, Christiana. Thanks, Steph. I guess I can add to that, really. So it, it, all, it is also quality of living. So from my point of view, what I want us to get out of this is to build something and deliver something that people actually enjoy living in um, and I've been someone that's lived in Bristol for for over 10 years now tried different you know neighborhoods types of living accommodation it makes a huge difference and if people want to live there they will carry on that stewardship that we've been talking about um, now it does get sort of carried down and people do sort of adopt that you know feeling proud of where they live and I think for for me the big success would be to deliver a scheme that does that that delivers a quality of living um, but also that attracts people as a destination which which um, Dan and Richard both also mentioned earlier um, it is somewhere I walk past every day and I always think would well, it be nice to have somewhere to sit around here um, or you know you know, you think of every uh, other European city. Um, there is a church and there is a whole piazza around it with people actually enjoying the views and, and the area. So why is that not the case here? Um, so yes, but from personally, my point of view is we want to see a scheme that is a success that everyone wants to, to live in. Uh, everyone is proud to be living in and that um, everyone else just enjoys um, visiting it. And we can sort of tick all those boxes that Jeff said we want it all, yes. So meet the housing crisis, have an exemplar scheme where it comes to delivering net zero carbon, connecting to the district heating system, all these things that Bristol can be proud of. Um, this can be that. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to all of you that came to be on our panel today and just clarify and inspire um, us as, as we look ahead to this competition. Um, if you have a question and we think of a question later, please do feel free to let us know. Um, I've just put a link to the Bristol Housing Festival Redcliffe Way project page. All of the information that you could possibly need is on that page. And at the bottom, there's also a contact form and that email will come directly to me. Um, and we as a team will be able to answer any further questions that you have. And then also just a reminder that we will be updating that FAQ document as well that's in the folder um, with any questions that come through. So we are very excited to have so much interest for the competition. Thank you so much for coming to hear more about it. And we look forward to your inspiring and inclusive ideas for this competition. Thank you so much. <laughs>